Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ibigay niyo naman yung best smile niyo. Yeah. Yan. Okay, no? Yes, our theme for the month is Dependence on the Father. At nasa ikaapat na yugto na pa tayo, no? At ang katanungan ay, Where does glory dwell? Yeah, banggitin nga ninyo. Where does glory dwell? Yes, in the Old Testament, uh, nung sila Moses po, no, left Egypt uh, to go to the promised land, you know, uh, God's glory was described as uh, in the uh, tabernacles, you know, where the glory of God is there, okay? The Ark of the Covenant, whenever they bring the Ark of the Covenant, there was victory. And what about The temple, okay, uh, the temple was built, okay, where there is the Holy of Holies, na doon po nagdi-dwell, no, yung glory ng Lord. That's the brick and mortar, the temple. But we don't have the temple right now, right? It's a New Testament. Because where is the temple now? Where does the glory of God dwell in the New Testament? The Bible says, The body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. It is in the body that the Holy Spirit indwells. And just like the prayer kanina, we ask God to be pure. We ask God that we are to be cleansed, that the Holy Spirit may fill us. So, and there is a future glory, you know. The future glory is when we see the Lord Jesus Christ coming again. Bible says, Look up, for your redemption draw it now. So the question is, the most important part of the question in our life today is, what is the now and the time when Jesus comes? What is the now and until Jesus comes? So for today, our uh, topic brings us to a special portion in the Bible, no? Where it is regarded as the uh, level po ng death and resurrection, no? Itong transfiguration. And sabi nga po ni... Alexander McLaren, the early Christians were looking not for a cleft in the ground, hindi yung mamatay na sila agad, no? the early Christians, but for a cleavage in the sky called glory. Kaya sabi ni Apostle po, no? look up for your redemption, draw at night. So before we proceed, allow me to open in prayer. Lord, salamat po sa umagang ito for the privilege of being able to preach your word as we listen, we ask Lord for your precious Holy Spirit to open our eyes, to open our hearts that we may reflect our lives in accordance to your word and respond, O Lord, through the prompting of your precious Holy Spirit. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Metamorphosis. Okay, so, dito po pala sa uh, mundo natin, there are certain animals that go through it. No? Yung pagbabagong anyo. Okay, and uh, uh, very common sa atin yung caterpillar, right? Nasa kukun siya. But uh, eventually, okay, uh, lumalabas sa kukun, it becomes a beautiful butterfly. Ang palaka, tadpole siya, no? But eventually, uh, habang lumalaki siya, okay, becomes a frog. Okay? And there are others, no? Like the spiders, uh, grasshoppers, and termites. Okay, 
So, for today, uh, we're going to tackle Luke 9, 28 to 36. Okay? And, uh, yan po, no? uh, the main idea is if we are fully dependent on God, glory will dwell in our worship, fellowship, and discipleship, just like our Lord Jesus Christ, who in His humanity was fully dependent on our Heavenly Father. So the, the first point is found in verses 28 and 29, glory dwells in worship. Okay, so this is about Jesus being intimate with the Father. And in verse 28 and 29, allow me to read, about eight days after these sayings, he took along Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing became white and gleaming. Okay? So, in verse 28, uh, it mentioned that they went up to the mountain to pray. Traditionally po, sa Bible, you know, yung mga Christians, they regard si Mount Tabor, next slide please, okay, which is 575 meters or 1,886 feet high, is the traditional location, the earliest identification of the Mount of Transfiguration as Tabor is by origin in the 3rd century. Also, saan ang location niya? Nasa may Jezreel Valley, okay, south ng Galilee. Ang Jezreel Valley po is, uh, for those siguro who have visited Israel then, no? yan po yung Valley of Armageddon. Okay? So if you can see the picture, nasa taas siya ng bundok and, and overlooking the plains. You know? At may tinayo po doon na uh, transfiguration. Church, okay? Gano'n ba kataas yan, Bong? Okay, ang taal po is 300 meters high. So this is what? Double Mount Taal. Okay? Mount Mayon is about 3,000 meters high. So Mount Mayon is six times the height of Mount Tabor. So mataas ba yan? Kaya ba ng mga 50s and above yan na akyatin? Okay, ano? it depends ang sagot. Okay, so, uh, sabi po doon, no? eight days ano? after this saying, ano? and what was that saying? Ano? In verse 20, tinanong ni Jesus si Peter, no? who do you say I am? Sabi ni Peter, very verbatim, sabi niya, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, when Peter said that, you know, it was with great conviction okay, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that is where this verse started. And what was the intention to go to the mountain? Para magpray. Okay? Para magpray. See, Jesus habitually prays to the Father whenever and wherever He can. He loves the mountains. Wow, no? Sino po ang mga mahilig pumunta sa mga bundok? Anyone here? Okay, I know of one, no? The daughter of a pastor. <laughs> loves the mountains where there is why? Kasi may solitude. Tahimik, di ba? May serenity. And of course, since it is elevated, malamig. Okay? The coolness of the surroundings. And prayer basically pictures the full dependence of Christ to the Heavenly Father. In his prayer times, you know, particularly in this particular situation, we observe intimacy with the Father. So one-on-one, -on -one you know, it's between Jesus and the Father. And if it is one-on-one, -on -one, it is very personal. Okay, it is very personal. And 
hindi lang po si Jesus yung umakyat, no? He took three of his disciples, namely si Jesus, ay si Peter and the sons of Zebedee. Sino sila? Si John and James. Lahat sila maging isda. Okay? Yan po ang trade nila. In verse 29, this is where the transfiguration took place. Anong sabi doon? His face altered and his clothing became dazzling white. Okay? Meron pong dalawang record din, no? Uh, about the transfiguration which were described in the synoptic gospels. Yung isa kay Mark, yung isa kay Matthew. Kay Matthew, sinabi niya, his face was transfigured, shining as the sun, and garments became white as light. Okay? Napipicture po ninyo yon. His face become as bright as the sun, and his garments became white as light. It's an amazing sight, no? Okay, for these three disciples to uh, be there, no? It's really something amazing once in a lifetime. What is transfiguration? Ang ibig sabihin po niyan, it's a change in form or appearance. Jesus' appearance changes so a glimpse is given of His full heavenly glory. Masasabi po natin na it was supernatural. Okay? What was supernatural about it? It displayed His divinity in glory. Kasi hindi lang po siya human, more so He is God. He is divine. His body uh, is described as a glorified and heavenly state. Okay? So, quite, pag ini-imagine mo siya, no? Wow! Glorified and heavenly state. At hindi lang yan, no? Pati yung kanyang damit, nagbago din. Okay? Kaya siguro yung uh, words doon na dazzling white, kasi may sabon na panglinis, si Daz. <laughs> okay, no? So hindi lang yung body niya, no? yung nag, na, naging glorified and heavenly state, pati yung kanyang kasuotan. And please take note, no? this happened while he was what? He was praying. He was very intimate with the Heavenly Father. He was worshiping with our Heavenly Father. What was He expressing? Yung kanyang pagmamahal, yung kanyang dedication, right? And that is worship. Itong event na to also pictures, of course, our inadvocacy, yung kakulangan natin, na maintindihan Dahil nga sa ating kasalanan. Our sinfulness limits our comprehension to understand and comprehend His glory. His full glory. So the question is, if glory dwells in worship and glory uh, manifested while he was praying, ang tanong, bakit ba nagpe-pray si Jesus? Okay, next slide please. The first point is to carry out the will of the Father. And what was the will of the Father? Okay, that he would die on the cross for our sins, for all our sins, past, present, future, was that going to be easy? It was not. Kasi in Luke 22, 41 to 44, it states there that he prayed repeatedly to face crucifixion. Naalala po ninyo yung Garden of Gethsemane? Siya nagpe-pray no, ng taimtim. Napakalalim. Kasi alam niya yung pagdadaanan niya. Okay? So, 
may kalooban ng Ama eh. So, si Kristo nasunod. Pero sa kanyang humanity, nakita niya na importante yung pakikiniig niya sa Panginoong Diyos. Na hindi dapat mawala yon At kadalasan po, hindi siya natutulog. Nananalangin po siya overnight. At sino ang natutulog? Ang mga disipulo natutulog. Pero sabi nga ni Gary V, natutulog ba ang Diyos? Hindi. Pangalawa is total dependence. John 4.19 Without the Father, Jesus knew He could not accomplish anything. Okay? He had a mission. Okay? He had a purpose that He needs to accomplish. And it is a 100% dependence, mga kapatid, no? Hindi siya 90%. Buong pagtitiwala, buong puso ang kanyang dependence sa Ama. And the third one is for divine guidance, which is in Luke 6.12. For every major decision, okay, Jesus always consults the Heavenly Father. And an example of that is before He selected the 12 apostles. So prayer is most important in the life of our Lord Jesus. It is His way of worship. It is His way of communicating to the Father every aspect of His life. In application, okay, pray like Jesus. Okay, mayroon ka bang nais na tuparin sa buhay mo na sinasabi ng Diyos na gawin mo? Consult God. May kakulangan ka ba? Iniisip mo na hindi mo kaya? Call on God. Depend on God. Intimacy is relative in our deep relationship with our God. Bakit ko po nasabi yon? Habang lumalalim po ang ating pakikiniig sa ating Diyos. Katulad ng mga apostol, sabi nila, we cannot help but speak what we have seen and heard. Though we cannot see God, in our quiet moments, we get to know God personally. And He speaks, right? Our level of intimacy is relative to our capacity to accomplish His mission for our life. And the third one, divine guidance. No, Sometimes uh, we get to be uh, irrational, we get to be impulsive in certain things na gusto natin decisionan kagat. Always divine guidance. And we can seek that you know, through counsel, through His Word, and even through our intimate time with our Lord. As a reflection, as I was meditating, naalala ko yung song na Majesty. Okay? Siguro, basahin lang natin, no? Such a powerful song, no? And sabi dito, uh, Majesty, worship is majesty. And to Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom, authority, flow from His throne unto His own, His anthem raise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, come glorified. King of all kings. Okay? Perhaps in your own personal time, uh, as you are intimate with our God, you reflect on this song. Okay? Hindi po mahalaga sa Diyos kung ano po ang tono ng boses ninyo. Ang mahalaga po yung tono ng puso ninyo. Second point is, glory dwells in fellowship. Okay, so, ito naman, two on one. Kanina, one on one, no? Jesus and the Father. Ito, 
two on one. Okay, kasi sa verse 30, okay, let us read together. And behold, two men were talking with him, and they were who? Moses and Elijah, who appearing in glory were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions had been overcome with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who were standing with him. Okay? So the next slide basically shows yung transfiguration scene. No? Yan. Okay? So you see Jesus there with Moses and Elijah and the three disciples. No? Peter, James, and John. Quite an amazing sight, no? Uh, the artist basically pictures it, but what actually was the visual scene, you know, during that transfiguration moment? The, the second point is glory dwells in fellowship. Uh, in Isaiah 53, okay, in verse 30, they, they, there were two men, okay? What, what were they doing? They were talking, okay? They were talking, okay? And sino sila? Si Moses at saka si Elijah, okay? And ano ba yung nire-represent ni, ni Moses at saka ni Elijah? Okay, Moses, as we all know, is the author of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. So Moses represents the Mosaic law. Elijah, who was raptured you know, and taken alive through a chariot of fire, okay, represents the Old Testament prophets. And of course, Jesus. Okay, nandun si Jesus, right? And what does Jesus represent? Jesus represents the embodiment of the law and the Old Testament. And its fulfillment. And not only that, no? both the Old Testament and the New Testament points to Jesus. Okay? Two great men and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? And also, in verse 31, Moses and Elijah also appeared in glory. Okay? Which means that they too have this glorified and heavenly state. Okay? Katulad ni Jesus. Quite an amazing sight, no? Quite an amazing sight. They were speaking of Jesus' departure. Okay? So, parang nagpe-fellowship sila, no? Ang kinikwento ni Moses at saka ni Elijah is the departure. Kasi may kailangang i-accomplish na mission si Jesus Christ okay, at Jerusalem. In Deuteronomy 21.23, it states, any person who is hanged on a tree is described as being cursed. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Deuteronomy is part of the Pentateuch part of the Mosaic law. Perhaps si Moses, ito yung inilalatag niya, no? Iniahayag niya kay Jesus. Okay? During that time. Eh si Elijah kaya? Si, kay Elijah, as he represented the prophets, Isaiah 53 talks about what? Talks about messianic prophecy, suffering servant, and the death on the cross. So, as representative of the Congress of Prophets, perhaps Elijah was also stating this in their conversation with Jesus. So, nagsasalita si Moses, nakasaad sa Deuteronomy, nagsasalita rin si Elijah, nakasaad sa Isaiah. So, maalam sila, okay? Eh bakit? Ang tanong, no? 
bakit sila nagahayag ng ganiyan sa Panginoong Heso Kristo? Okay? The question is, bakit nga? Eh, alam naman na lahat ni Jesus yan. The answer is, yes, Jesus knows everything, but He is also 100% human. Okay? He needs what? He needs encouragement. He needs refreshing. And He needs comforting words. Right? They were in fellowship. As I was meditating, parang unique ito, no? Sanay tayo mag-hashtag, di ba guys? Hashtag. Nilagyan ko ng hashtag. Hashtag, meeting in glory. Amazing, no? They were meeting in glory. All of them in glorified and heavenly states. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. They were fellowshipping in glory. Pag nagmi-meeting, there was a goal, right? The goal is for Jesus to accomplish His mission. Okay? What else? They're sharing. Moses were, and Elijah were sharing. Providing their inputs. And what was the outcome? The outcome is Jesus more or less was encouraged. More or less encouraged. What was the meeting and fellowship about? Because Jesus knew what he will be going through because of his humanity. He needed encouragement, refreshing. And quite noticeable is sinabi po dyan sa verse na yan na he was on a listening mode. Okay? So sa, sa meeting, sometimes you speak, sometimes you listen. Okay? So, in verse 32, what were Peter, John, and James doing? So, habang this hashtag meeting in glory, fellowshipping in glory, ano ginagawa nung tatlo? Sabi sa verse 32, sila po ay natutulog. Okay? Natutulog sila sa pansitan. Okay. Yan, yeah, no? So, Pinipicture ko nga, no? hindi, mahi, hindi madali na umakit sa bundok. No? And they came from different ministries. Prior to this uh, account, you know, they were the feeding of the 5,000, which was uh, preached a few Sundays ago. Marami po. No? And siyempre napapagod din. No? Okay, so later on siguro, bakit nga ba sila natutulog? Pagod nga ba sila? Or may layunin ang Diyos kung bakit sila pinatulog? Perhaps that's something that we can answer later, no? But, sabi doon, nagising sila. They became fully awake. And what transpired next is an amazing and astonishing moment for the three apostles. They saw what? The glorified and heavenly state of Jesus and the two men. Okay? Okay? They saw, nakita nila, that this, Jesus was transfigured and at the same time, Moses and Elijah were in a heavenly state. They were in a hashtag glorified meeting. At ano, sila po ay nakatayo. Hindi sila nakaluhod, hindi sila nakaupo. They were, what? Standing. Yan, yeah, no? Christ, after consulting with the Heavenly Father, was strengthened in fellowship with Moses and Elijah. What came first is the one-on-one -on -one followed by the two-on-one. -on -one. Glory dwells in fellowship. In application, seek God daily in our quiet times and do not forsake the fellowship with your accountability e-groups, be it on-site or online for exhortation and prayer. In our generation today, we praise God for the internet. We praise God for this facility na kahit tayo po ay 
magkakasama online sa inyong respective e-groups, kahit ikay nakasando lang at saka nakashort, okay lang. Okay? God provided this facility for us to meet. And it's important for us to be with God first, which is in worship and in fellowship together with our accountability e-groups. Why? Because it is where relationships as well gets to be strengthened. Why? Because there is interaction in fellowship. We get to pray for one another. We praise God for the women, the men. We are urging the men you know, to be part of e-groups as well because Jesus has his own group of men, right? So, seek God daily and be part of an accountability e-group. The third point is glory dwells in discipleship. And this is three on one, okay? So, one on one, two on one, Three on one. Sino naman to, no? Si Peter, John, and James, and Christ. Okay? nag ojt po sila. And what an amazing OJT where they were witnesses of an event, a transfiguration event that shows the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 33, let us uh, read together. And as these two men were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here, and let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not realizing what he was saying, but while he was saying this, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And then a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and reported to no one in those days any of the things which they had seen. If you were to picture Peter, James, and John. No? Ano kaya yung kanilang naramdaman no? when they saw the transfiguration at nakita nila si Moses and Elijah? Siguro kinilabutan sila, no? maaari. Uh, na amaze, na astonish. Okay, seeing something that is extraordinary, supernatural, for the first time, right? Perhaps, sila din siguro ay natakot. Okay? Natakot. Buti na lang, tatlo sila. <laughs> Di ba? Minsan, may mga scary moments tayo, right? Lalo na kung tayo ay nag-iisa. But in that particular moments, hindi nag-iisa si Pedro, kasama niya si Juan, at saka si Jaime Santiago. We do not know how long the glorified meeting took place and what specific words they heard from Moses and Elijah. The Bible did not specifically state that. No? How long was the meeting? Ano nga ba yung isinaad din ni lahat ni Moses and Elijah? Perhaps this was the period of time they recognized Moses and Elijah. Kasi nung araw po, di ba, uh, wala namang Facebook, wala naman camera. No? If you come to think of it, paano nakilala ni nung tatlo, si Moses and Elijah? And, and these two great men of old you know, were way ahead of them. Right? Jesus, yes, kasi kasama nila si Jesus. Eh. But how did they came to know and recognize these two men? Perhaps, sabi ko nga, marahil dun sa pag-uusap, no? 
we exactly do not know how how long you know was the conversation okay and in verse 33 that conversation that meeting and fellowship finally ended as stated in verse 33 natapos you know and what does that picture as well you know that picture also uh, that that situation also pictures that the purpose of Moses and Elijah was done okay nakapag-encourage na sila kay Jesus okay na ang inyong mission is done the disciples overhearing of what was said were even more amazing that truly this there is truth in what in life after death di po ba what an amazing sight kasi alam nila si Moses you know, was the friend of God and has the only privilege in the bible who gets to be buried by God himself but nobody knows where Moses was buried namatay na si Moses no and that scene basically solidifies the statement that there is life after death purihin ang panginoon
Apostle John, no? in John 1.14, sabi niya, no? The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. Perhaps he was saying, we beheld His glory. One of those situations was the transfiguration because He was physically present during that time. See how the Bible connects, you know, how it relates. And the experiences of the apostles, they express it. No? But details of that cannot be seen anywhere. No? Because there is that statement that there are things that cannot be told which man may not utter. So, sa application po natin, on the third point, I was saying the word delay kanina. Let us not delay to heed God's call for discipleship. Listen, seek the deep things of God, and aspire for the greater gifts to have a glorified vision of His purpose for your life. Ulitin ko po. Let us not delay to heed God's call for discipleship. Listen, seek the deep things of God, and aspire for the greater gifts to have a glorified vision of His purpose for your life. There is where, that is where inspiration comes from. The Lord Jesus allowed the inner circle to witness this. Were they inspired? Definitely yes. Okay? They went on to be great apostles. They went on to preach the gospel boldly. And they were as well able to disciple others. I am involved with some, I know it's a, just like CCC, and they wrapped up their full year uh, a week ago, no? 